Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the UFO Planet Sightings and News Report. I'm your host, Darren Crapo. On today's program, we're going to show you some of the most recently reported UFO sightings from around the planet. We're going to get all that started right after this. Welcome to today's program. I hope you all had a fantastic week while we were gone here. We have some interesting news to get started with on today's program, and we didn't have to go far to find the very first story. It happened right here in our own backyard in Alberta. We have a report on the Alberta Police Report about the first charges being laid for flying a drone in an area where you're not supposed to fly it. And this happened here just recently on Sunday, January 17th, in Calgary, Alberta. Now what happened was there was a, a young fella, he was 25 years old, named Syed Saha, and he was flying his drone in a public park in the city of Calgary, but he was in the flight path of the Calgary International Airport. Now, you're not even supposed to fly them in the city to begin with, but Syed was charged, and now he's gonna have to face charges in court. He may receive a fine of up to $25,000. I'm kind of excited about the new laws that they have put in here in Canada because I think it will eliminate a lot of the uh, UFO sightings that we have that are actually drones flying over residential areas, and people are unaware of what they are. So I guess we're gonna have our first trial here That'll take place on uh, January 28th in Calgary, and we will see exactly what the Crown of uh, the the Queen uh, Court of Queen's Bench does with that fella. Next, we're going to take a look at the ninth planet. Yeah, you heard me correctly, and I'm not talking about Pluto. This comes to us out of Caltech, and I found it kind of interesting to go through and to watch the video and to listen to their theories on what they believe is a ninth planet. Planetary astronomer Professor Mike Brown. Now, a lot of you are going to remember Mike Brown. He's the professor that took away, I guess, basically the status of Pluto. He killed it. He took it back down to a different status. Now, he's saying that there is a ninth planet after all, but it's lurking around the edge of our solar system, and it's about three times larger than Earth, and it revolves around the sun in a highly elliptical orbit. How did they know about this? Well, the researchers say their suspicion that there could be another planet lurking further out in our solar system came in 2013, shortly after they discovered the dwarf planet Sedna in the Kuiper Belt. They noticed that it had an odd orbit, almost like it was being affected by the gravitational pull of a much larger planet, unseen planet number nine, they're thinking. We know that the Earth's orbital period is one year, that it's 93 million miles from the Sun. We're going to compare that to Jupiter here. We know that it's about 12 years for it to orbit. Well, the ninth planet has an orbital period, they say, of 20,000 years and is 60 billion miles from the Sun. Now, you can see in the animation here, you can see Sedna, and you can see it is in comparison to the ninth planet. And they say that they noticed this because of the gravitational pull. Now, the uh, astronomers at Caltech are not the only ones that noticed this gravitational pull. It was also noticed by an astronomer in Washington. So some exciting news there, especially there for the people who believe in that planet, planet X. There's a whole bunch of different names for it. When the moon is in the seventh house and the Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. Sounds like a good love story, doesn't it? Well, it's actually a song, and you've probably already heard it before. It's quite old, but something that's not old is love. So coming up right now and until February 20th, something that you can do on February 14th, hint, hint, ha uh, happy Valentine's Day coming up, you can take your special someone out and show them 
five planets all at once, actually six if you include the Earth. You'll be able to see Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter, and like I say, technically the Earth because you're standing on it. And that will happen until February 20th, so if you're looking for something romantic for your Valentine, you're going to have to get up in the pre-dawn hours and or stay up that late and you can shore all the planets. Sounds like something fun, doesn't it? A good date night anyway. We have more coming up. We're going to get started with our UFO sightings and we're going to go to Colombia and the United States of America. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Look out over the water. Uh -huh. All right, you see those two lights? Uh -huh. They've been there for a while now. One of them's going over the water. There's... You see it, right? Well, I'm just one in the water, right? No. No? No. Where did it go? UFO planet. Welcome back to the program. I found that video that you were just watching there from Pompano Beach quite, a, quite interesting and the reason I did is because it's a good example how two people can be looking at the exact same thing and see two different scenarios. He thought it went into the water, she says no it didn't. It's time now to get started with our UFO sightings. We're going to begin today in Gret, Gretna, Louisiana. And this is a, a shiny object up in the sky that was captured on January 18, 2016. It, to me, it looks a lot like a missile. In fact, that's what I labeled it on uh, for today's program, is a missile-looking, unidentified flying object. So let's take a look here. You see it there up in the sky. Well, at least you clearly see the vapor trail that was left behind this object. It definitely, to me, does not look like a typical jetliner or passenger airliner. We're going to have a little bit of a closer look here, zoom in, and maybe run it through some filters here. This person says that they had a really good look at it, and the object, uh, from all different lines of view, to capture what kind of an activity it was doing. So now you can see in the zoom in up there on the screen, it definitely looks like a missile, doesn't it? We run it through a filter here and it clears it up quite a bit and makes it appear as though there are three engines on the uh, back of this object propelling it through the sky. What do you think, a cruise missile or something like that? Some potential there, isn't there? Florida in the United States of America, April 23rd, 2012. We're gonna jump back to, although this was just recently submitted. This is a UFO near a jet aircraft. And it's kind of interesting to look at. This person says they saw the airplane and saw something beside the plane that was extremely fast. And this happened while they were on vacation. So it was a great vacation experience. You can't pay travel agents to get experiences like that. Well, he's, he shot the objects and uh, it was about six times as fast as the plane, he says, and in the direction of the sea. Here is a close-up of this object that we can uh, get an idea what this person saw in the skies over Florida. Bogota, Colombia, we're heading to next, a January 21st sighting. And this is what uh, the submitter describes as five blue balls of light up in the sky. Blue isn't a color we often have reported here on the program. So there we have it. We have the lights up in the sky. You can see four of them right now. And this occurred between 8 and 9 p.m. 
And uh, he says that the, the lights weren't very far apart from each other and they were changing patterns from a V pattern to an M pattern. First thing that came to this techie's mind was, well, maybe they're advertising VMware, who knows? But in any case, you don't often see five blue balls of light in the sky like this particular submitter did over Bogota, Colombia. What do you think he was viewing there? If they were orange or yellow or something like that, I would say Chinese lanterns, but not blue. Delco, North Carolina, we're heading off to next, January 19, 2016. This one from Delco is a couple of snapshots that I selected from multiples that were sent in. Uh, he calls it, it describes it as a triangle with three dots of white lights and one red. But I selected two of the photographs. This is the first one he's, because he says it's, it's a pulsating subsonic vibration that was seemingly morphing. So we take a look at this shot right here. It looks like a couple of uh, lights, only two. If you painted some things in the corner there, it could look like a couple of eyeballs. But this is the sighting or the uh, photograph that I thought was a little bit more amazing. Now, he also says that he was heard an inner voice telling him to go outside and then look west. So he's saying that he was inspired or, or prompted subliminally to go out and capture that. Very exciting, wasn't it? And that came to us from Delco, North Carolina. We still have more settings coming up next on the program. In fact, we're gonna go to Nairobi, Kenya, Louisiana, Canada, and Mecca. not know or may know a number of the uh, top rock musicians of the last uh, say 50 years uh, like the Stones, the Beatles, uh, uh, Kiss, um, U2, all these bands have had an association with UFOs. They've got UFO lyrics uh, or the uh, lead singer has uh, declared that he's been abducted or had encounters. So I'm going to go through the whole uh, music. UFO planet. Welcome back to the program. After I interviewed Grant Cameron there and he told me all about how rock stars have uh, lyrics and everything like that and are, you know, have even reported abductions, things of that nature, that led me to believe that I now clearly understand why I am a rock and roller. I love rock music. I may come from the ranch country but uh, you couldn't pay me enough money to listen to country music. Let's get started now with our five sightings in a row, hitting the wrong buttons here, talking too much. We're gonna begin in Nairobi, Kenya on this segment of the program. This was a sighting that took place on January 22nd, and this is a moving light in this, on the clouds. This is, it's difficult to see when I show you the original video here, you're probably just seeing mostly a black screen. And initially that's what I saw. We're gonna run it through here though, the entire footage of the original footage. You can actually see the light and if you're watching it on your big screen on Roku, you'll see this a lot better. We're gonna run it through a filter here and as soon as I ran it through the filter, I knew exactly what I was looking at or potentially looking at. This is something I've seen a lot as a child. My father is a private pilot and we spent a lot of time at the airport picking up the airplane to go flying and we'd see this all the time and it looked to me like an airport light that is beaming up to the clouds there and, and just rotating. Now down in the United States so you have to keep in mind that they, they also have those uh, spotlights like the movie spotlights that they use to attract attention to sales and things like that to, at a particular store but it certainly has all the earmarks of an airport beacon, in my opinion, and not necessarily a UFO. 
number two here. We're going to head now to New Orleans, Louisiana, submitted by Christopher Downs. Thank you, Christopher, submitting this. Let's have a look and see what Christopher ran across. Look at that. No sound, nothing. Probably about 1,500 feet. Flying northeast, going over Broadmoor, heading towards downtown New Orleans. An interesting experience from New Orleans. Thank you so much, Christopher, for sending that in. And thanks for sending it in to MUFON to have them have a look at it as well. Next, we're going to go back to March 2nd, 2015. This one's in Canada, in Barrie, Ontario. This is an object that the submitter thought, well, he initially thought, it looked a lot like a star, and that is until he zoomed in on it. With the naked eye, definitely looks like a star. Zoom in on it, it looks entirely different. Look at all the lights on that, and it, you can kind of see to the right of it, it looks like that object goes over more and more lights appearing there. He says he does believe in the possibility of alien life and craft in our skies, but he's not quick to label this as an alien ship. He says rather it's just something that is unknown to him. Coming to us from Barrie, Ontario. Not your average looking star, that's for sure. I guess you can go through the checklist and uh, kind of figure out you know, at least eliminate some of the things that uh, the potential. There's no aviation lights flashing on that, is there? That's a hint. March 2nd, 2015, Foster City, California. This is two or three shiny objects going in and out of the clouds. Listen into this one. I got it. Exactly, that's my favorite. I'm not able to capture it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very faint, yeah. Yeah, right there. It's coming, coming, in. It's coming in and going. It can be UFO. Dude, what, like, what is it? It can be UFO, it's very small. What, what do you think it is? It's not a bird, that's for sure. It's in the clouds. Birds don't fly in clouds. It's not a kite, it's not a plane. Yeah. I don't know, man. I gotta get something shiny over Foster City. Now we're going to Mecca, California. Had no idea there was such a place. I guess you learn something new every day. Down in Mecca, they had more bright lights. We get a listen to this one too. Uh, on those two lights right there that just appeared in the sky out of nowhere, maybe like a minute ago. They're coming down right now. And. Okay, and look at a third one just appeared out of nowhere. You saw that? I'm not bullshitting. Yeah. Okay, look, look, look. One's going down. One's going down. You see that? They're flares. Are they flares? They, you think they're flares? I don't think they're flares. Look. Look, look, look. There's three. All of a sudden, look at the perfect fucking line. How the fuck is that flares? Check it out. Trip out. On those two lights right there that just appeared in the sky out of nowhere, maybe like a minute ago They're coming down right now. and okay and look at a third one just appeared out of nowhere you saw that i'm not bullshitting yeah. okay look 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 one's going down one's going down you see that they're are they flares they, you think they're flares i don't think they're flares look 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 there's three all of a sudden look at the perfect fucking line how the fuck is that flares very interesting, isn't it? That's our five in a row for today's program. We still have a whole lot more coming up on today's program, including 
our hot video clip of the day. And if I can read here, it comes to us from Bentendorf, Iowa. It's something amazing, a pulsating spear shot on January 14th. Stay with me so you can have a look. like that and he was later looking through some of his photographs and noticed this object that was in the photograph and he says it's not dust because it only appears in one of the photographs so let's take a little bit of a closer look at this now take a look to me it looks a lot like a helicopter but i am absolutely positive that i have seen this somewhere before whether it is an app or something Welcome back to the program. So I guess you guys figured out that that was a street light that we were looking at on the last program. Didn't look like a helicopter at all. So I went out and I looked at our street lights here in Medicine Hat, Alberta, and it doesn't look anything like that, but that doesn't say that that isn't a street light. As soon as I read that and I looked back at the photograph, I thought, you're bang on. That's exactly what it looks like. Well done, you guys. I really appreciate it. It's time now for our hot video clip of the day, and this is coming to us from Bentendorf, Iowa. The submitter describes it as a pulsating sphere. Have a look and see what you think. An unidentified flying object over Benton Dorf, Iowa. That definitely, in my opinion, deserved hot status today. I want to say thank you to everyone for tuning in to the program. It's been a wonderful experience putting together all these videos for you today. And thank you so much to each and every one of you who submits your videos, photos, and your stories. I really do appreciate hearing from each and every one of you. I hope you all have a fantastic week. I'll see you again on the next episode of the UFO Planet Sightings and News Report. My name's Darren Crapo, and remember, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. See you next time.